The moment that a player lifts the hammers and strikes the strings, music is there. Have you seen this musical instrument before? A percussive, stretched string instrument that needs a hammer for striking? An instrument that reveals the astonishing diversity of the world's music? This instrument is called the hammered dulcimer. On the map of the distribution of the hammered dulcimer and possible routes of dissemination, the route of dissemination overlaps with the Silk Road. For many centuries, the Silk Road, the network of trade routes which connected the East and the West, was central to cultural interaction between the regions. It may lead us to the possibility that this instrument traveling along the Silk Road with people was used to make some of the first world music jam sessions and was developed together with the trade of silk and porcelain on the journey. Now let us explore the uniqueness of the various hammered dulcimers along the Silk Road together. The hammered dulcimer has been known by dozens of different names. The various names can be classified into different families and convey some of the character of the instrument such as its structure, material, and even usage scenarios within each culture. About the origin of this instrument, due to its great age, the academic circle has not yet reached a unified conclusion. Among all the statements, the prototype of Santur can be seen as the earliest. Santur is the Persian term in the areas that are influenced by Persian culture, such as Egypt, Georgia, Greece, and India. Its history can be traced back to iconographical documents of the ancient Babylonian era and the Neo-Assyrian era. Around the 6th century BC, Santur already appeared among the instruments in the orchestra of Nebuchadnezzar. Today in Iran, Santur is still an important instrument in the traditional orchestra. In our map, the dotted arrow, northwest from Turkey to Western Europe, shows us the possibility of a way that hammered dulcimer was introduced from Byzantium to Western Europe in the 15th century. The instrument then dispersed into the rest of Europe and gained many different names there. In Germany, it is mostly called Hackbrett. Its cognates among Germanic peoples are shown on the slide. While the term tympanon is used in Western Europe, Symbolum is used in Eastern Europe. In the 1870s in Budapest, the Hungarian concert symbolum was designed and created by Wenzel Josef Schunde. This innovation enabled symbolum to appear in symphonic works and then to play an increasingly significant role in the modern music works of Hungarian composers. In the Orient, on the other hand, the Mandarin Chinese term Yangtzin is most commonly used. One popular theory says that Yangtzin was introduced to southern China in the Ming Dynasty and originated from the Persian Santur. That is why its original name Yang means foreign. Through China, Yangtzin was further introduced to other countries in East Asia, for example Korea. Nowadays, the other character of Yang, with the meaning of elevated, has come into public acceptance. Yangtzin's resonating chamber is covered with a thin soundboard of white pine or other softwood. The hammers are springy, thin bamboo beaters, with one end covered by rubber. This unique construction allows players to use various techniques to produce sounds with different textures. Since the mid-20th century, to adjust to the new concert hall environment, Yangtzin has been reformed. Both its size and range have been enlarged. Thank you for watching Fresh Sounds, Instruments of the Silk Road, the episode of the Hammered Dulcimer. Stay tuned if you want to know more about Silk Road Instruments.